my first boss in my first practice he was a fantastic vet but he really hated doing spay procedures and actually uh, towards the end of my time there he stopped doing them all together because he had other vets working for him who were happy comfortable and he didn't have to do them anymore if you've got a female puppy then you need to decide if you want them spayed once you've decided if you want them spayed you need to decide when to get them spayed and then the decision making isn't over you need to then also think about whether you should just have their ovaries removed or whether they should have a complete ovario hysterectomy and that is exactly what today's question is about welcome to call the vet the show that answers all your dog and cat questions so they can live healthier happier lives and here's your host veterinarian dr alex avery Hello, 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 and thank you for joining me for the half century of the Call the Vet show. So 50, it always feels like a bit of a milestone. It seems like a bit of a milestone in numerical terms, and I'm really pleased that you're joining me for another episode today. Now, if you've not listened before, then I'm Dr. Alex. I'm the veterinarian behind OurPetsHealth.com. I'm a small animal veterinarian. Uh, I graduated in 2006, and um, yeah, working exclusively in uh, companion animal practice and small animal practice. Uh, looking after dogs and cats just like yours. So I'm really pleased that you're joining with me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on future content. And for those of you who have listened before, I appreciate you coming along for another episode. And I've got a really important one to talk about today. I often say that, but I feel a lot of these topics, a lot of these questions are fantastic. Keep these great questions coming in, please. Uh, You can get your question answered. Just go to callthevet.org and you can fill in the form and I'll be answering your question soon. But keep these great questions coming in because I know they help more than just yourselves. You might think that you're the only one with the question that you have, but believe you me, they help bring up really important topics for everybody, whether you've got a dog or a cat, whether they're young or old. I know these topics will help you. So, and then just before I jump into today's question, I just wanted to let you know about the soon to be launched Our Pets Health member hub. So this is a really exciting project that I'll be launching. It's going to contain exclusive live streams, Q&A sessions with me, a lot more contact with me, uh, courses, resources, discounts, a community forum as well, where you can interact with other enthusiastic and experienced pet owners just like yourself. And the whole point of the hub is that it's going to help you to look after your dog and your cat to a much better degree to make sure that you're confident, you're comfortable in knowing that you're doing everything you can to keep your furry family member as happy and healthy as possible. And as pet owners, as a pet owner myself, I know that's exactly what we want for our family members. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, and I hope it is, then you can get kind of early bird access and exclusive launch discounts over at ourpetshealth.com slash member. And jumping into today's question, which was sent in by Robert, who asks, if I were to choose to have only the ovaries removed from my six month old lab, are there any long term risks compared to traditional spaying? So that's a really good question. And it's definitely one that's maybe becoming a little bit more common that people are asking or maybe something that people are thinking about or hearing about for the first time. So let's start off by saying, well, what is spaying? Well, spaying is either removing just the ovaries or removing the ovaries and the uterus and that's a uh, ovariectomy if it's just the ovaries or an ovario hysterectomy if it's the ovaries and the uterus now Traditionally, depending on where you are in the world, depends on what procedure is going to have been performed. My understanding is that in America, then normally it's an ovario hysterectomy, which is the same as in the UK. Whereas in Europe, there may be more traditionally doing a just an ovariectomy, an ovary. Now, both of those are a spaying procedure. So you won't necessarily know exactly what has been done. But in a way that's really not important as I'm going to kind of discuss with you now but you know that's where where those different terms come from and it might be that you weren't aware that there was a difference at all which is absolutely fine now whether we whether kind of if you have a choice you should choose one over the other the bottom line is is that I don't think it really matters which one is going to be 
completed in your dog. Um, there's not really any significant difference in my mind, certainly as far as I'm aware, in the risks or benefits of removing just the ovaries when your female dog is spayed compared to having a traditional or certainly a traditional in the US and in the UK, a traditional ovario hysterectomy carried out. Now, in theory, there's going to be an increased chance of uterine tumours if just the ovaries are removed. But these are incredibly uncommon. So uterine cancers in dogs, it only makes up about 0.4% of all cancers in dogs. So it's really, really rare. And so, you know, in the real world, this is a theoretical risk rather than a real life risk to the vast, vast majority of dogs. And I wouldn't base any decision about which surgery is done based on the risk of your dog developing a cancer of the uterus further down the line when they're older. Now, that said, if I'm personally, if I was spaying an older dog and there was some form of uterine pathology, if there was a, a hint of a uterine problem present, then I would always take the whole uterus along with the ovaries. I think just removing the ovaries in that situation would be a bad idea. But for young dogs, that's really not going to be an issue because in again the vast vast majority there's not going to be any pathology within that uterus especially if you're removing the ovaries at uh, six months of age which is robert's uh, the, the age of robert's dog that he's asking about um because what happens here you remove the ovaries that actually the uterus is very hormonally driven in regards to its growth and what happens to it so if you remove the ovaries you remove those hormones then actually the uterus it shrinks up to kind of a really tiny quiet organ that does doesn't do anything so um, you know the, the risk of anything happening is very 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 slim as I've already mentioned so why should you maybe choose between doing one or the other well removing just the ovaries it can definitely make the surgery faster and it can make the incision smaller um, that is going to depend though on the surgeon performing the procedure I tend to find uh, when I'm carrying out the procedure actually my uh, the, the hole that I need to make is is really insignificantly different um, so it's pretty small I've done a, a whole load of these procedures as you can imagine and I'm very comfortable performing them I know it, it you know it is a major surgery and it's something that some veterinary surgeons will sweat over for their whole career I certainly know uh, my first boss in my first practice he was a fantastic vet but he really hated doing spay procedures and actually uh, towards the end of my time there he stopped doing them altogether because he had other vets working for him who were happy comfortable and he didn't have to do them anymore so it's going to depend on the surgeon performing the procedure um, but the other reason is actually laparoscopic spays they're becoming more and more popular there's something that I've um, spoken and written about before and I'll leave a link to uh, the benefits and potentially draw drawbacks of having a laparoscopic spay performed in your dog i'll leave the link to that in the show notes if that's something you're interested in but with laparoscopic spays the ovaries are removed and the uterus is left that's all that's done there's never the time that the uterus is removed at the same time with a laparoscopic or a keyhole spay procedure um so you know that's something to think about there as well um and then the other benefit, I guess, of removing the, the ovaries alone is that there is going to be a slight reduction in surgery risk, although the risk of that surgery is already very, very small, especially if you've got an experienced surgeon and your dog is otherwise fit and well with no particular problems. But the reason that the, the surgery even in an ovariectomy comes at a slightly reduced risk is that exposure is better when it comes to tying the ligatures, tying the knots that we need to do to make sure that those blood vessels are fully blocked off and are not going to bleed. And if the exposure is better, we're going to be able to, to theoretically tie better knots that are more secure, that are tighter. And so the risk of a ligature slipping and therefore your dog bleeding after surgery is going to be reduced. Now, that is a real risk. It does happen from time to time, but really it's very, very uncommon. And, you know, the vast majority of cases are going to go, space surgeries are going to go without a hitch at all. Now, so that's really uh, uh, ovary ovariectomy versus ovario hysterectomy. So removing just the ovaries versus removing the ovaries and the uterus. In my mind, like I say, there's not really any difference in those. If you're, if you're thinking about laparoscopic space, again, that does come with potential benefits, potential drawbacks, especially when it comes to cost and make sure you check out those show notes. But the other big thing that you need to be thinking about when it comes to spaying your female dog is actually the timing, how old they are 
when they get that surgery done. So in Robert's case, he's asking about a Labrador that's six months of age. Now, the the potential risks, the potential benefits of having your female dog spayed is a huge, huge topic. And actually, the timing of that um, is very important because especially for our large breed dogs, I'm often now typically recommending that we delay that procedure until after your dog is about 12 months of age or a little older. So the benefits of getting a dog spayed are really irrefutable. It reduces the risk of mammary cancer, especially if we're doing it at an early age, especially before their third heat. Um, It eliminates the risk of pyometra, um, obviously the complications of, uh, of having puppies of of having a litter of puppies and there's a whole load of other benefits there ultimately spay dogs also live longer so that's going to be a huge benefit but if we're spaying our large breed dogs especially too young when they're too young and their grow their kind of skeleton hasn't grown and matured well enough there is going to be the potential for an increased risk of joint problems so depending on the breed that could be hip problems elbow problems and stifle so knee problems especially cruciate ligament rupture which is a big problem in labradors uh, and a big problem in a lot of large breed dogs in general so for that reason i will often recommend actually that we delay that so robert delays that uh, procedure she, he doesn't have his female dog spayed until she's 12 months of age or later now there's definitely going to be situations where you're going to still want to do it earlier or about six months of age which is kind of the traditional age and when i'd still recommend small breed dogs have their procedure the benefits are going to be if a dog can be mated if there's the potential that she could be mated well we definitely don't want her to be having a litter to that first season so getting a spade early if there's no other way to prevent that from happening um, also if there are potentially behavioral problems coming in especially when it comes to aggression or other potentially hormonal hormonally dr- driven behaviors now spaying and also castrating a dog as a a fix for behavior problems is never the only thing that you should do there are definitely going to be other things that you should be doing other management strategies uh, behavioral modification strategies that you should be undertaking to make sure that that behavior doesn't progress but getting your dog spayed or neutered is definitely going to help you get that situation under control get your questions answered at callthevet.org now, if you want to learn more about the timing as well as the the risks and the benefits to getting your dog spayed in general, then I've got a really comprehensive article about that over on the website and I'll leave the link in the show notes. So definitely check that out. You know, that's a really big consideration about whether you should get your dog spayed in the first place. And it's not something that we can reverse. So it's definitely important that you make the right decision for you. So that's it for me for today's episode. Remember to head over to ourpetshealth.com slash member if you're interested in getting early access and exclusive launch discounts to the member hub, which is going to contain a whole load of useful, valuable information all designed to help you make sure that your pet is as happy and healthy as possible and you're going to get much more access to me on various live streams, Q&A sessions and in the exclusive community forum. So if that's interesting to you, if that sounds like something that you'd like to get involved with as a really founding member to help drive where that goes, head over to ourpetshealth.com slash member. And until next time, I'm Dr. Alex. This is the Call the Vet podcast. And until next time, take care. You've been listening to Call the Vet. Be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode of the show that answers all of your pet questions.